Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm sorry I haven't been doing any videos a lot lately because I was actually sick for a little while. I've had some problems with my ears a lot lately, you know, having trouble hearing for a little while, but I think it's getting better now uh, after a week or so. So I'm finally doing a new movie this week, and it's eventually it's a sequel. To the original movie that I really enjoy, that's very entertaining as an action comedy superhero flick called Kick Ass. But right now, I just want to see the movie Kick Ass 2. And it stars Aaron Taylor Johnson, Chloe Grace Morantz, Morris Chestnut, Christopher Mins Plaz, Jim Carrey, Donald Faison. Augustus Prue, Clark Duke, Amy Enzo, Claudia Lee, Lindsay Fonseca, John Licazamo, Robert Ems, Lindsay Booth, and Yancey Butler, Orga Kokulina, and Stephen McIntosh. And it's written and directed by Jeff Raylow. The movie begins four years ago since Dave. Lewinsky, you know, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, had became the costume vigilante known as Kickass. Has been dealing with being a high school senior, gone being stuck out of boredom, especially when he's around with his best friends Marty and Todd, both played by Clark Duke and Augustus Prue. Additionally, other individuals have gone on to dress as superheroes the same way that he was back in the day. However, Dave asks Mindy, who of course known as Hit Girl, help him continue training and become a good fighter like she was, becoming even more tougher than before. And that includes, you know, target practice and a lot of, you know, fighting and training skills that they wanted to do. Meanwhile, Chris the Amigo, you know, who's being more spoiled and rotten than ever before, played by Christopher Mintz Plaz, you know, from the movie Superbad, has moved to Long Island and still seeking revenge against Kick-Ass for the death of his father, who was a local kingpin that you saw in the last film. So he complains to his mother, Angie, played by Yancey Butler, and his new bodyguard and owner, played by John Leguizamo, about removing the news report on Kick-Ass from his DVR. He soon later killed his mother and decided to come up with his own new plan to stop Kick-Ass and the rest of the game from coming. So eventually his old costume known as Red Mist has changed to simply reborn as, get this, Motherfucker. While Dave is expressing his fear of dying to Mindy especially after her father was killed trying to be a superhero known as Big Daddy you know, who was of course played by Nicolas Cage in the first movie Minnie was telling Dave that if he fears death he will eventually die so unfortunately you know Dave's quest was to find some more superheroes uh, that's led by Colonel Stars and Stripes who's played by Jim Carrey but with the help of this game, they come around, you know, teaming up together just to stop a crime that's going around the streets. You know, saving people's lives, stop all these criminals from coming, and do all these, you know, superhero types. Meanwhile, Dave is still feeling alone without Hit Girl teaming up. So, Mindy have went on to, to meet free girls, turn out to be bitches, of course. You know, always falling in love with boy bands and all that crap. All this girlish stuff. Just trying to find ways to, to get revenge on them for, for taking you know, Minnie's date and all this other stuff. But at the same time, Motherfucker, of course, <laughs> has decided to come up with his own plan to find more criminals as villains to stop them. So both Kick-Ass's team and motherfuckers, of course, decided to, to go battle and battle to stop everybody from, from harming everyone's way. And with them, 
and try to make the whole world even better than before. Well, as much as I love the first movie, because I still think it's one of the funniest and, and hilarious, not to mention action-packed, you know, very brutal violence all the way around, I gotta admit, though, it's not nearly as good as the first one, because it has, like, like most movies these days, which we've been getting a lot lately, I feel like, you know, they, they've been going a little too far. They, they started focusing on other stuff that just seems like it's going out of nowhere. And I feel like, you know, the whole problem with this movie it was that I think they're focusing more on today's pop culture. I mean, I, I know they did focus on that in the first movie, but but when they go on like that, it just goes way too long. And I think it needs to stop. Because all I keep hearing nowadays is having to show all of this on viral or... You know, they talk about YouTube and Facebook and all this other stuff, even Twitter. That frankly, I think the social media and internet thing is starting to get way out of hand. And, I mean, no offense though, because I know I'm on YouTube and everything, but it's just getting really annoying. And then all this other pop culture stuff, including boy bands and all that shit. Yes, they threw all this crap in there. I know it's a parody, but to me, it's, it's just kind of sickening to see that. Yeah... Gotta love our stupid generation. Yeah. Where, where's the fun in that? Seriously. I did enjoy this sequel as much as I could because it, it did have some good stuff in this movie. I mean, I love Jim Carrey in that role, but sadly, I wish he didn't give enough less screen time than I was expecting it to be because it, to me, it sort of kind of ruined it a little bit. Yeah. So... I gotta admit, you know, he could have had more screen time than ever before. And another problem was, though, was that I think they tend to make uh, Christopher Mintz Plaza's character more like, you know, like the Joker in The Dark Knight. Yeah, I had to compare it to him, but but it seems like, you know, that's always playing nowadays, because, you know, because I think I liked him a lot better when he was known as simply Red Mist, because I thought his character was more hilarious than, than what he was now. In the movie. Because to me, I think he just went over the edge in, in this sequel. And plus, I think the story also became more darker now than it was in the first movie. And that's my only big complaint nowadays with, with superhero movies today. Is that they always want to come into a darker side that just kind of ruins it. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's okay to make a superhero movie more serious than ever before. But when they go up to that edge, it seems like it's going on way too long. And I think that needs to stop, too. Because Kick-Ass is supposed to be a funny comedy that sort of plays exactly like how it's supposed to be. You know, having, you know, superheroes, you know, dressed up in their own made costumes that they have. Kind of like cosplay, if you think of it this way. Or something like that. Because yeah, you often see that nowadays in those places. Yeah, I mean, it, it, basically what it is. But they try to make it more like, like it's real in, in that sort of way. Because I know they, they tended to make it real. But it seems like, yeah, they just went too much of it. But on the other hand, I did like some of the jokes that they throw in in the movie. That I think it was just hilarious. Some of the villains were actually pretty cool too. Including uh, Mother Russia. You know, I thought that was uh, pretty clever. That they actually made her you know very tall and... And she fights even more than than what Hit Girl did. So that was just, yeah. <laughs> I know it's just it's it's very silly, but it's not as good as the first Kick Ass. I gotta admit, it is worth watching. So Jeff Raylo, who went on to direct the movie Never Back Down and Quiet Wolf. I gotta say though, you know, I'm not a big fan of some of his previous work. It is kind of a shame that Matthew Bond didn't direct the sequel. Because I say the sequel would have had looked a whole lot better than I thought. So, yeah. So, I know there was a problem right there. You know, I, I had a good time. You know, it's been a while since I've last saw another movie. But I'm just glad I finally saw something that I think it's worth watching. And, but if you're a big fan of the first Kick-Ass, I think this will be in for a treat. But just be aware, though, you might be a little disappointed. So anyway, I give Kick-Ass 2 
three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.